welcome students today we will be discussing chapter 3 financial statements of a company in which we will be discussing the general meaning objectives nature and very important the revised schedule 6 which has undergone a drastic change this year and applicable for this year exam of 2013 so let's start with our lecture today first of all what are the financial statements what is their nature and meaning to start with these financial statements are the end product of the accounting process whatever we do in accounting it is the end result of that these are prepared by following consistent accounting concepts principles and procedures there is a need to arrange them in a very proper form so that users can use them effectively for their decision making purposes now what are the financial statements there is a balance sheet which tells us about the position statement of the company then there is a p&l account which is now known as statement of profit and loss which tells us about the income statement of the year and third is cash flow statement which tells us about what are the inflow and outflow of cash during the year or how the cash is utilized during the year now what is the nature of financial statements these statements are prepared for periodical review on the progress made by the management and the status of investment in the business and what are the results achieved during that period the following points explain the nature of the financial statements it is based on recorded facts these statements are prepared on the basis of recorded data in the books now this data is on historical cost basis and it does not show the current financial position of the company current means the latest market position it is not showing because we are recording on the historical cost the cost at which we acquired our assets next point accounting conventions fixed assets are always valued at cost or market price now this convention is being followed so that we record on historical cost and there is no change of the inflation in the accounts now small items like stationery although they appear to be an asset but they are treated as an expense due to the concept of materiality because whatever is material that has to be recorded and whatever is immaterial that has to be shown either as an expense or not recorded at all but the remaining balance of stationery which is there at the end it will be valued at cost now use of these conventions by all the organizations makes it very comparable simple and realistic the nature of financial statements have a third point that is postulates now what is postulate postulate are basic assumptions which we are going to make while doing our accounting like going concern assumption money measurement assumption and all these things now what is going concern we assume that firm will exist for a very long period of time that is a foreseeable future whatever we can see and money measurement means transactions are recorded at historical cost and in terms of money only right if there is no value of money which can be attached it will not be recorded in the accounts next point personal judgments financial statements are based on personal opinions estimates and judgments in depreciation life of asset is estimated now this is the estimate provision for doubtful debt is always on estimate because we don't know actually how much bad debt will occur but we just think upon it may or may not occur so we make a provision on the basis of estimate now conservatism rule is also followed while preparing the financial statements that is we always take possible losses into account but we never take the possible profits unless they are realized now these personal judgments have to be made so as to make them good financial statements coming to the next topic that is objectives of financial statement why do we make financial statements the main objective is to help the users in decision making 
after understanding the profitability and financial position of the company. But there are some other objectives also. First is to provide reliable, adequate and periodical information about the resources that is assets and obligations that is liabilities. Information about earning capacity that is profit and loss. Information about cash flows, whatever is the inflow and whatever is the outflow of cash during the year. To judge the effectiveness of management that is how they are performing, whether they are able to achieve their targets or not. And important activities about social environment, what the company is doing for the society at large. Disclosure of important accounting policies the company is trying to follow. And if there is any change, they must tell why they have changed those accounting policies. I hope you know accounting standard 1, where it was written, whatever policies you apply, they should be applied consistently. And if at all there is a change, you should give a note about that. Right? Next point, what are the types of financial statement? As told to you, first is balance sheet, which tells us about resources that is assets and obligation that is liabilities. Next statement is statement of profit and loss. Here we will be having a summary of all the revenue and expenses reflecting the results that is the profit or loss for the period. And the third statement is cash flow in which we will be telling the inflow and outflow of cash in various activities that is operating activity, investing activity and financing activities in detail. Let us discuss about the form and content of revised schedule 6. Now, why this new revised schedule 6 is there? Because disclosure in financial statements should be made at par with the international corporate reporting. And the second reason is while going global for our issue of shares, debentures and loan etc. The disclosure will be according to the requirement of international community at large. Now, what are the salient features of this revised schedule 6? First, it is only in a vertical format. Previously, horizontal format was very popular, but now only vertical format is allowed. Balance sheet now contains only two types of liability that is current liability and non-current liability. Similarly, asset side also contain current assets and non-current assets. Then there is a statement of profit and loss which classify the expenses on the basis of their nature. And instead of schedules, the information will be given in the notes to the accounts. In current assets, we will be having an item cash and cash equivalents, which will include the following balance with the banks, check and draft in hand, cash in hand and others. Now, what does this others mean? Others means fund for specific purposes, which we know as earmarked funds. Earmarked fund means for some specific purpose like for unpaid dividend. Next, it also includes security money deposited with the bank against the borrowings. Suppose the bank says you have to keep this money with us as security against your borrowings. So, that you have to keep with the bank, but that is your asset. So, that will be included in the others category. Next, miscellaneous expenditure which was previously shown on the asset side comprising of share issue expenses, discount on issue of shares etcetera are now shown under other current oblique non current asset depending upon whether the amount has to be amortized in the next 12 months or not. If it has to be amortized or written off in the next 12 months, it will be other current asset. And if it has to be amortized after the period of 12 months, then it will be a non-current asset. And profit and loss debit balance, which was previously appearing on the asset side, 
will now be a negative figure in the reserve and surplus. That is, if reserve and surplus is having no balance, will be showing minus balance and if it has some kind of plus balance, we will be adjusting this negative from that positive balance. Let us discuss the major heads and their contents on the liability side first. The first point on the liability side is shareholder funds. It will tell us about the authorized capital, issued capital, subscribed capital and in that subscribed capital there will be two parts subscribed and fully paid and subscribed but not fully paid. Not fully paid means on which there are some calls in arrear. Next point opening balance of shares will be reconciled with the closing balance of shares. Next is there any person holding more than 5 percent of the shares of the company that has to be told separately. What are the shares allotted for consideration other than cash? Suppose we have purchased an asset and we have allotted shares for them that has to be stated separately. And next point is, is there any fully paid bonus shares which have been allotted? Next, is there any unpaid calls we have to tell separately for directors and managers? And the last point is, what is the balance in share forfeited account? Under the shareholder funds, the next point is reserve and surplus that is consisting of capital reserve, capital redemption reserve, security premium reserve. Now, this was previously known as share premium account and share options outstanding account. Any surplus in the statement of profit and loss will be shown here and if there is a loss, it will be shown as negative figure. As I told you earlier, profit and loss debit balance will be deducted from this figure. Next point under the share capital is money received against share warrants. Whatever shares are allotted in future as it will give a right to acquire the share in future. Now, these shares are not allotted till date. So, whatever money you have received for the warrants should be shown separately under this head. Next point share application money pending allotment. Now, this means suppose we have received application money, but allotment date falls after 31st March that is the balance sheet date. So, we will be allotting the shares after the balance sheet date, but we have received the money. So, we will be showing this money, but under a separate head that is share application money pending allotment not share capital right. Now, please remember we will be showing only that application money which is non refundable portion under this head. Suppose there is an application money which has to be refunded that will be shown under other current liabilities. So, what we have understood today is what are the financial statements, what is their nature, what are the objectives of financial statement and why this revised schedule 6 has been made applicable and we have discussed one part on the liability side that is share capital. In the next class, we will be discussing about other parts of the liability side and the asset sides. Till then, thank you very much.